What's up guys, welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video we're going to be covering extrusions. They're pretty fun. Make custom extrusions from scratch. I'm actually going to go into a family, just a blank family. I'll go to new family and I'll go down to just a generic model. We're not going to get anything into this video other than extrusions. And I'll hit open. And so I've got a blank template here. Just a reference plan, reference level view. Nothing too crazy here. Um, if I come up here at the top, I will find extrusions under the create tab. So if I hit extrusion, at this point I am prompted to draw a profile. I need to draw something that is one, it's completed, it's it's a uh, closed loop, so I can finish a like a fully closed profile. And at that point, I can use that profile and then the Revit will fill it in and I can push and pull and I can set the dimensions that I want. What I can do is really just make any kind of random design. And so I, I'll just go ahead and draw some lines in here that signify an extrusion. I'll get some weird angles here as well. So at this point, this is gonna be a valid extrusion. And it's valid because it's a completely closed loop. If I hover over one of the lines and I hit tab, I can see that it is a chain of walls or lines. It's a chain of lines in this case. And if I select it, I can see that every one of these endpoints is, it's essentially not filled in. Whereas if I were to see something like this, where I have a, a, a disconnection, I would, see, and I hover over them and select them all, I would see that these points are filled in versus these are not. If you see filled in points, that means that they're not connected to a chain, they're not closed, they're not connected, they're just floating in points. Whereas these are actually connected. So we wanna make sure that we see all of those and know that it's a chain. It's a long-winded way of saying we, it has to be a closed loop or I'd get an error. At this point, I can hit the check, red, uh, green check mark and I'm done with my extrusion. At this point, I can even begin to still push and pull these different points and these different faces rather and change the extrusion itself. And if I go back into it after having adjusted these, I can see that my extrusion has also been updated. So it, they're, they're kind of interchangeable wherever you edit them. At this point, you need to determine your pushing and pulling of the extrusion. And that's found in the constraints over here. I've got my extrusion start and end points. Something to be aware of is that everything in Revit is based on work planes. And if I'm in a, a reference level or any floor plane level view, that reference level or reference the work plane, a hundred ways to say the same thing, the work plane will be that level that you're working on. And it's, it's all the same for elevation or section. If you're in a specific view that is ter determined based on a, a, works, a work plane, you're going to be stuck in that work plane in that view. Whereas if you're in 3D, you can use any work plane as long as you set it yourself. Because I'm in a reference level view, and because this is considered, I guess, level zero in a family, whatever you want to call it, it's a floor plan. And so I'm stuck on that in this view. So whenever I click on my extrusion, I can see that my start is at zero, zero, and the start of any extrusion will always be on the work plane that you set. In this case, I didn't set it, it's on that reference level. And then my extrusion end is based on that length. Now let's go to 3D and we can finally see this. I see it in 3D and at this point I can change this to any dimension that I'd like, just like that. I could also push and pull just like I can before. And I mean, really that's gonna do it, that's your extrusion. You can start to add m a bunch of these together. You can, you can copy it and do the same thing, mix it up some more if you want. That's gonna be the basics of extruding. I will get into families later on but that's extrusion. I can even take this a bit further and if I want to set this on a specific work plane I can pick a work plane and now I can choose somewhere that I've already made like I made this extrusion. I can select that extrusion I can choose to draw another extrusion maybe I want to draw a square and so because I set that work plane to that shape or the the face of that shape that extrusion I'm now drawing on that extrusion and just like before, 
my extrusion start is on the, the work plane itself and my end point, my extrusion end is extending beyond that. And you could also go negative as well. If I push that beyond, I can see that my number in the end is now negative. So that's, and I, you can take this as far as you want. You can now start to set work planes wherever you want. You can use this as a way to create work planes, but typically you might want to use reference planes. You might want to use existing walls in your project, anything like that you, that you want to use. You may not necessarily want to create things to use work planes. That's kind of what reference planes are for in families in this case. That is going to do it for extrusions. It is a very basic tutorial of how extrusions work, where you might use them. You can use them for roofs, ceilings, whatever. And because I'm in a generic model, this can turn into anything. I am in just a basic family generic model. And if I come up here to the family categories and parameters, I can change this to any type of category in, the pro in Revit. So maybe this is furniture, you know, this is this could very well be furniture i don't know you could call this furniture and whenever i load this into my project it will fall under the category furniture and that helps with visibility purpose purposes whatever it might be but anyways that's going to do it for extrusions a very basic tutorial if you learned something and you enjoyed this video please demolish that like button it really helps also change that phase of the subscribe button to existing that also helps too I sure hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.